Appearing on CNN Monday morning, retired General David Petraeus claimed the consequences for Vladimir Putin's decision to invade Ukraine will become all too apparent to Russia this week as the war continues to drag on and as the sanctions against the country take hold. Take a look at the CNN discussion. After a Russian airstrike hit a large military base in western Ukraine just miles from Poland, which of course is a member of NATO, the attack killed at least 35, it wounded more than 130. That is what we are learning so far. And joining us now is retired four-star Army General David Petraeus. He is the chairman of KKR Global Institute, previously served as the CIA director and the commander of U.S. Central Command. So thank you so much for being with us. Um, I wonder what your reaction is to this occurring so close to the Polish border. Well, I've been to that base, actually. It was a sprawling training center, uh, and it highlights the possible risk of spillover into NATO member countries. Uh, Russia clearly was trying to interdict the resupply effort that probably is, is organized there and, and so forth. Uh, also, probably a volunteer uh, reception center for the foreign volunteers that are streaming into Ukraine as well. But of course, as you noted earlier, it's very close to the border with Poland. Uh, I'm sure that U.S. and NATO officials have discussed these kinds of scenarios. I suspect they already have uh, ways that they would respond depending on what scenario. Uh, it, it comes about. Uh, but again, it's a, a really big concern because it shows how this could spill over and it could involve NATO countries directly rather than indirectly, as is the case right now. You said about it, an off ramp. What are you looking at that gives you an indication that Russia may be ready to find one? And what might that look like? Well, I don't want to predict something imminent. But again, the fact that negotiations are still taking place, the fact that Clearly, the economic consequences of this are going to start to come home to roost uh, in, in Moscow. Probably this week, at some point, they're going to begin to default on the rollover of their debt payments. Uh, at some point, again, the people are going to realize, you know, the stock market's never going to reopen. Uh, we aren't getting much for our ruble anymore. Uh, various products that they used to take for granted are just not going to be on the shelves of stores. Again, this is starting to happen. Uh, and it will escalate in the weeks that lie ahead. I, I mean, McDonald's is closed, for example. Um, you know, that's a real penalty, to be clear. Um, so people will be unemployed. The jobs that they previously had will not be available because countries are literally, or uh, businesses are literally decoupling uh, from the Russian economy. Uh, as this continues, again, the pressure on Putin is going to build. He will not show it. He's going to try to, to appear uh, to dismiss it and so forth. But I think that's a reality that he is going to have to confront. These are unprecedented sanctions. Again, we've never seen anything like this. CNN reports that Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky pressed U.S. President Joe Biden during their latest call for more sanctions to further squeeze Russia. According to multiple sources familiar with the call, Zelensky specifically asked Biden for further efforts to cut off Russia from international trade and to continue targeting the Russian elite, as the U.S. has continued to add more oligarchs and their families to its sanctions list. Zelensky also mentioned closing off Russia's access to international waterways during the call. Zelensky and Biden spoke for 49 minutes on Friday, and during the wide-ranging call, Biden detailed the latest actions he was about to announce, including a move to revoke Russia's favored trade status with the U.S. by suspending normal trade relations with Russia, a move that requires approval from Congress. Biden said the U.S., along with the G7 and European Union, will call for revoking most favored nation status for Russia, referred to as Permanent Normal Trade Relations, or PNTR, in the U.S. The president also said G7 leaders would seek to deny Russia the ability for borrowing from the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank. The president announced the U.S. would ban goods from several signature sectors of Russia's economy, including seafood, vodka, and non-industrial diamonds. In addition to banning several imports, he said he would sign an executive order ending the exportation of luxury items, including spirits, tobacco, clothing, jewelry, cars, and antiques to Russia. A White House official told CNN at the time that the administration's goal is to continue pressuring Putin by hurting Russian oligarchs and the country's wealthiest people by depriving them of their creature comforts. It is also aimed at removing ways for these oligarchs to shelter their money, as they are already increasingly closed off from traditional financial avenues, according to the official. The White House, along with the European Commission, France, Germany, Italy, the United Kingdom, and Canada, announced this weekend they would expel certain Russian banks from SWIFT, the high security network that connects thousands of financial institutions around the world. Biden has also banned Russian aircrafts from U.S. airspace, joining a growing number of countries who have closed their skies to Russia. 
The U.S. and its allies have also agreed to release 60 million barrels of oil from their strategic reserves, a move intended to reduce gasoline prices that have climbed rapidly in recent weeks, according to the International Energy Agency. Russia is the world's largest exporter of natural gas and one of the largest exporters of oil. Thank you for watching. Please be sure to visit us at rawstory.com. And if you'd like to see more of the Raw Report, please like and subscribe and join others who like their news raw too.